Assalamualaikum dear students, welcome back to Learning Daily Physics. So today you can see on your screen that we are starting a topic 2.6 from the F10 time varying magnetic field. So let's have a look first on our book. This is F10, page 39. So the topic says that 2.6 time varying magnetic field and what we are going to do is we are going to do today drive out this equation and we are going to prove that mu is constant for the time varying magnetic field. So let's start with derivation. So we say that uh, the first analogy you have to know that the first thing that you have to know is that when a charged particle enters in a magnetic field what happens it move it start to move in a circular motion let me tell you how it happens i've already told you in the start uh, if you have st seen my previous lectures my starting lectures of chapter number two so there was an animation where you can see that how a charged particle when enters in a magnetic field starts a gyration okay so let's say that and this is north pole and this is a south pole so let's make it like this so this is n and this is north pole south pole so magnetic field lines are in this direction let's say a positive charge particle enters here and when it, when it enters here what it do is it start gyration this is a gyration and the thing what we will do here in our derivation that we will neglect v parallel we will neglect the v parallel component why we are going to neglect that v parallel component i am telling you right now so let's say that this have a velocity vector v in this direction and this is its v parallel let me make it red one this is v parallel and this one is v perpendicular here this one is v perpendicular so let me make it more simpler for you that velocity component here was this and this was the direction and this was south north to south this was the v this was actual v this was v parallel and this was v perpendicular okay now the gyration was like this okay so if we neglect the v parallel component what will happen we say that it is not moving in this direction okay it's only moving in a circular path so what happened when this v of perpendicular will be equal to zero we are not considering this v of perpendicular this the motion will be only along v of v perpendicular and it will be only like this okay it won't move like this it will circle it will move in a circle at the same spot okay so this will be the llama radius or perpendicular or perpendicular llama radius and everything what we are going to use in our equation i've told you just to make your mind just to make you clear that what we are going to do so now we are going to place our plasma or our charge because we are studying single particle motion in the chapter number 2 f10 so we are going to place a positive charge in a time varying magnetic field a magnetic field which is changing with respect to time so let's see what happens when a charge is placed in a varying time magnetic field so let's have a look that when a charge enters into the magnetic field we know that charge enters into the magnetic field and this is the charge on a force charge experienced force experienced by the charge and uh, i've told you that 
when it circles it moves in a circle this is the direction of magnetic field and the velocity is always perpendicular to the force okay velocity is perpendicular to the force which means that the displacement vector is perpendicular to the force okay so theta is equals to 90 degree w is equals to f dot bl cos of 90 degree and cos 90 is equals to 0 so we will find out that w is equals to 0 for this case now from the above equation we say that no work will be done so charge cannot accelerate there is no work which means that charge is not accelerating okay when the charge is not accelerating it means that v parallel is zero and we know that v parallel y v parallel is zero so from the differential form of faraday's law now we are going to use our differential form of faraday's law and this is also the third equation in the maxwell equations so if you want to know that where this equation came from so you have to watch a lecture of mine in electrodynamics electrodynamics 2 uh, griffith david j griffith from the book of david j griffith it's actually i think chapter number seven uh, you can watch my playlist and the maxwell equations in the maxwell equation this is the third equation and this is also the differential form of faraday's law when you find faraday when you describe the faraday's law the differential form of that faraday's law is curl of e is equals to minus partial b by partial t but this equation tells us that the changing magnetic field produces an produces an induced electric field okay because of changing magnetic field we have an electric field and because of this curl of this electric field produces magnetic field this is a couple equation okay couple equation between between electric field and the magnetic field okay so curl of e is equals to b dot this partial b by partial t is equals to b dot okay so let's say that this is a lorentz force f is equals to qe v cross p and this is the b and this is the induced electric field okay this is applied b and because of this applied b this is the induced electric field so m dv we can write this newton force is equal f is equals to m a newtonian force is equal f is equals to m a and this m is equals to dv per dv divided by d t q is equals to e plus v cross b neglecting now we are, i'm using that term which i've told you in the start that why we are why we are neglecting v parallel component so neglecting v parallel just to make our gyration just to neglect the gyration and only study the circular motion of a charge so this will be dv will be equals to m dv let's say d of v will be equals to dv perpendicular plus dv parallel so we have neglected the dv parallel so only the term we have is dv perpendicular so m dv perpendicular is equals to d over dt is equals to this term so let's see that what is the effect of this induced electric field for that we are going to neglect out the applied magnetic field right now and we are only talking about the induced electric field so this m dv perpendicular by dt is equals to q into e so let's see how we've written that okay so this m dv perpendicular by dt is equals to this is q E. okay this is q this is not d this is q e now multiplying this with v perpendicular on both side uh, one v perpendicular here and one v perpendicular here now we can write this equation this equation like this if you take a time derivative of th this vector it will be equals to 1 by 2 multiply by 2 m v perpendicular multiply by d v perpendicular partial by partial t this is a partial by partial t d of t these two will be cancelled out with this two and the term you will have will be m v perpendicular d v perpendicular over d t which is a equation here we have 
So we can write this equation like this and this V perpendicular we know is equal to dl velocity is, a, is equal to rate of change of displacement which is equal to dl by dt. So this dt is cancelled, d by dt is cancelled out with this d by dt, let's say d, d, dt is cancelled out with this dt, this dt is cancelled out with this dt. So the thing we have is a partial half of mv perpendicular is equal to qe dl. So this was our first part and we have completed our first part by making this equation. In next, we are going to resolve this equation and by this we will add some new terminologies. So let's move on to our next lecture and we will see what happens and how this mu is equals to constant. Okay, so till then. Thank you very much for your time. Assalamu alaikum. If you like my video, subscribe my channel and watch my next lecture. That's what happens in next.